Alright, good evening everyone and welcome. This is Twist Gaming where you get to play board games with us. We're coming to you live here from our studio in sunny South Florida bringing you another episode of PSI Presents where we show off some amazing games from the PSI catalog. But first up, who are we? I'm Matt. I'm Anne. We're Twist Gaming and today we are joined with Maddox from Keymaster Games. How are you doing today, Maddox? Hello, hello. I'm doing great. Thanks, Matt. So today we have the pleasure of showing off not one but two games uh, from PSI and Keymaster Games. So first up, we're going to be showing off Caper, followed by Campy Creatures. So Maddox, can you tell us a little bit about Caper? Yeah, so Caper, uh, you are a mastermind thief. I mean, and your goal is to steal or win the rewards of these different locations that are going to be out each game, uh, different places across Europe. So depending on the city that you're playing in, maybe you're playing in Paris, certain uh, places might come out, and you're going to recruit your team of thieves there and then give them some sweet, weird, quirky gear and try to win the rewards uh, from those different places that are out that game. My mind's already going towards, like, Ocean's Eleven. Mm. <laughs> Who's the thief from Spider-Man? Black Cat? No. Keep on going. Oh, no, I think it's... Anne, I think it's your turn to dig oh. deep and ask the important questions of the evening. Are you suggesting, Matthew, that we get into the meat and potatoes of things? I wasn't going to say that, but sure. It's Matt's catchphrase. <laughs> it's not as much fun when everybody doesn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> really kind of... <laughs> I'll be over here, guys. All right, Maddox. So talk to me a little bit about Keymaster Games. Um, these two are two fairly new games. One of them is on pre-order right now. Correct. Tell me. Oh, God, I love it when I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of games would you say that Keymaster uh, yeah, makes? We only make games that start with, like, a hard C letter. So, like, <laughs> paper or campy creatures or Control, or Key Master. I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, those are all our games, and that, that's like a, a joke. It's not really, we don't try to do that. It just happens. Uh, but Key Master makes games. Uh, we started as like graphic designers, illustrators, and we love board games. And so a few years back, we wanted to uh, basically just try our hands at making a game. It was just a fun little side project that Kyle, um, one of the guys at Key Master, and I wanted to do, and so uh, we made this game called Control. It's a light card, uh, time travel card game, five to ten minute rounds, and we were just like, let's just put this up on Kickstarter, just try to raise a minimum quantity, try to raise 7,000 bucks and let's see what happens, uh, and just do the design up like as much as we can, you know? Uh, and so we put it out there, and it ended up blowing up and raised uh, 70,000 bucks, and so we are like, well, I guess we should uh, maybe think about doing this more. Uh, and so uh, a year later, we came out with Campy Creatures. Um, and then this past year we're doing, uh, or this current year, I guess, is Space Park and Caper. And so we just got started as designers. We want to have that focus in on our games of uh, beautifully designed games uh, mechanically and the look of the games that are kind of that sort of like gateway or uh, sort of style where they would fit into that time frame of like under an hour. So. I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all that you tell me that your guys' background is in graphic design because just the uh, box art for all three games, you know, I know we have Campy Creatures <coughs> and Caper here with us today, uh, but I also got to see the box for Control, uh, which is black and white and very geometric pattern, and it's all just very pretty. It, it's very inviting. It makes you want to kind of get into the game. Uh, so it's very cool. You guys started off kind of as board gamers and decided that maybe this was something to do professionally. What was it like taking the transition from going into an, uh, an industry like graphic design and getting into game design? Something to do professionally. Yeah, so, what was uh, it like taking the transition? It's a huge difference. I think with uh, the, a lot of the stuff that we did was digital, um, so it's easy to deliver files to people over the internet waves, uh, whereas... <laughs> With board games, you have to figure out, hey, we need to test this product super thoroughly. You know, any revisions, they need to be, like, good to go if something's going to print. You know, it needs to be completely ready. But basically, how do we get this thing made and get it from point A to point B into someone's hands uh, and, and figuring out all the costs associated with that stuff so that you can kind of hit the right target market or audience that you're trying to hit, but also... Um, not overprice a game that you're, that you're making. And so that was like a big thing, I feel like, of just instead of just delivering digital files to someplace, now it's, I need to, we have to deliver this physical product that 
uh, has this design elements or whatnot, but it has way more involved processes of like, it has to cross the Pacific Ocean and get to this fulfillment center to then get out to all these other people. And so uh, a lot more logistics, I guess, involved. Uh, but it's fun because I think there's something about that physical product that you don't get from a digital design, like holding in your hands and seeing those sort of things. Uh, and the things that we want to do for our games that kind of like take it to that place of like whether it's the gold foil or metallic inks and caper, things like that, that kind of like hopefully make it unparalleled in like the digital world, like actually having that physical product changes like a person's feel of it. That's a really nice kind of thought. First of all, it's really awesome that you got uh, that you mentioned all of the other kind of the business side that comes along with making board games. I think all too often uh, people who are adept at designing games and who are very creative tend to forget that when it comes to making this a product and uh, something that's going to earn a, a profit or something that may not even be profitable but but is doable because you need money to make things. So even if you're breaking even, you still need to be able to figure out how much money that is in order to accomplish your goal. I think that people don't necessarily take that into account or, or really that's not at the forefront of people's minds. So the fact that you're talking about things like fulfillment centers, distributions, you know, and all the rest of that is is super awesome. And I love the point that you made about um, the little extras that you have as a designer put into the physical product like the metallics and the and the gold ink because there's so much uh there's there's such a strong conversation around well what's the difference between a a board game and a video game and here are items now that you know i feel like that's a check mark in the board game category that you can have these kinds of elements the luxury in, items yeah in in a physical presence that you can't really get on on a computer screen so that's that's really cool uh, talk to me a little bit about, well, we're getting into caper and campy creatures tonight. So talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for the themes of the games. Yeah. So, uh, caper wise, um, this was a game that we licensed, uh, from a Spanish publisher. So they released a game called it's mine and we found it from some different reviewers talking about it. And so I reached out to them and was like, Hey, we love this game. Uh, this looks awesome. We we got to test some. Would you be interested in licensing us the mechanics for that? And we'd be interested in updating the art and whatnot. Uh, and so, originally uh, the game had different art, but still had a similar theme of these thieves. And and basically, uh, I I think I, I made the wrong call of like, oh hey, can we like tweak the theme to maybe something uh, along the lines of like, you know, a more mafia or maybe even a pirate style game where you're playing your ships out to different areas and then putting your guys in ships. Um, but they were really great and, like, really talked us through a lot of the heart behind the cards and the heart, the heart behind the theme of this, like, quirky, almost like Pink panther style vibe uh, to it. And so I think we were able to take that idea and be like, okay, yeah, there's something super nice here and... Josh, the artist behind the game, Josh Emmerich, did an amazing job. But basically, we got together and started talking and getting ideas. And the original game didn't have any of the gear in it. That was like a big thing that we added. And then we were thinking about how can we make this like really fun, like almost this Wes Anderson style to it. Because I don't, I haven't seen that much in games today, uh, or just different movie styles or things like that. And, and taking that and kind of applying it to uh, certain design and games. And so that's one of the things design-wise that we want to do differently is like maybe something that you wouldn't have seen in board games. And so uh, caper-wise, the theme came from them, which was great. We loved it. Uh, I mean, I, I thought it was like, I, as soon as it all came together, I was like, oh, of course, it couldn't be anything else now. Um, and so it's been super great to see all that. And then Campy, I always wanted to make a monster game, Campy Creatures, where you're a mad scientist and you need to collect mortals for your experiments. And, of course, you're going to use your monsters to do that, to go out and capture them. And so, like, I've, I've always been a fan of big, like, B-movie horror posters like uh and the type the fonts on those are amazing and so uh i i think i purely out of design just wanted to make a game in that way and then kind of the mechanics from there uh followed in as we tested a whole bunch of different ways for that but uh that was where that came from was like a love for those movie posters um from back then so super cool so matt 
Are you ready to get into the meat and potatoes? I sure am, man. I really hope you say that. Let's like, get into the meat and potatoes of things there. <laughs> uh, so, Maddox, would you mind giving us an overview of the rules here for Caper? So, brief primer for everyone. Anne has not seen this game at all, except for what's on the table right now. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't know any of the rules. Nope. Josh dug through the rules beforehand, but he's not playing this evening. He gave me a little bit of a primer as to what I'm expecting to see. <laughs> and as a heads up, we do that to see how easy the game is to pick up fresh from multiple perspectives. So, I'm the slightly more experienced one here, but uh, we're going to rely on you to teach us tonight, Maddox. Yeah. Glad to glad to be on the journey. Uh, so, with Caper, as I was saying, you're uh, a mastermind thief. This is a two-player game. Uh, you, there are three and four-player variants, but it's really focused on that two-player game. And then once you kind of know that game, you can kind of maybe expand out into those variants. But that's why we're kind of pitching it as this two-player game. Um, you are two players. Great. Uh, one person is going to be the uh, cream or white mastermind, and then the other one is going to be the mint mastermind. So, uh, I'm fresh to the death. <laughs> so each of those uh, players is going to take on that role, uh, and it's just going to help know who's going to go first on different rounds. So there's six rounds in the game. In each round, you're either going to be playing thieves to different areas of town, or you're going to be giving your uh, thieves different gear cards. So there's our round tracker, and uh, that's going to say, hey, is this a thief round or is it a gear round? And then it tells us how many cards to deal each player. Um, by the number there from the deck that matches that. So, uh, with that, you are going to be playing all these guys out and you're trying to get card combos so that you can win the steal from one of those locations. Uh, when you, when at the end of the game, everything's going to be tallied up. If you have enough capers, then, uh, or I'm sorry, not enough, but more than your opponent, you're going to win that location. Uh, but you're able to score points from your thieves or your other gear cards. And that's going to allow you to, at the end, tally up all the different points. Yeah, the Colonel, great reference there. He's one of our favorite thieves. Uh, <laughs> his posture is amazing. Uh, but basically, he's going to score you one point for every blue card that you have in that district area, or that location area, since there's that location icon there. So uh, the, the Colonel wants a lot of blue cards in his area, and he's going to score one point for each of those. Um, so there's ways to score points from thieves, there's ways to score points from actually winning the location's rewards, um, and at the end you're going to tally all that good stuff up and whoever has the most points wins Cape. All right. You know what the best way is to learn that game? To jump Just in head jump first. Right in. All right. right. So to start out, what? so I'm going to switch over to the board cam now. So we're going to be playing in Paris tonight. So uh, we have the gala, the casino, and the Louvre. Oh, Matt, I always wanted you to take me to Paris. <laughs> Actually, I don't. <laughs> Let's steal some stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm I believe I'm it's gaming. pronounced the Louvre uh, is how they say it right in here in the south. The, the Louvre. Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Paris, beautiful Paris. Let's talk about it. So, um... In this place, uh, they've already set this up here, which is great. They're playing in Paris. Uh, there's, a, you know, 13 different cards that could come out uh, when you're playing in Paris. Uh, but these are the three locations that happen to come out. Uh, different Paris thieves are shuffled into the thieves deck. And then different Paris gear is shuffled into the gear deck. So each game, uh, you're going to choose a city. There's Paris, Rome, and London in the box. Um, but, and it'll change the game immensely. And then whatever locations come out, these are going to stay out here for the game. So this game is going to be set around the way that these are going to score points. Locations are going to be a primary way that you're going to score points. Um, and then, as I was saying, you can score points from other cards too. But that's going to really set the tone for the game. So um, let's look at uh, those locations. Um, in the middle there, you can basically you have these, for example, the gala. Uh, here, it's going to give you five points and then one point for every one of your blue cards played there. So that location marker is saying, hey, for your district area, for each of those, you got to win it to get those points, but you're going to score an extra point for every blue card there. Just as a heads up, your gear cards are where those, all those colors are going to come in, and your thief cards are cream colored cards. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so the gear has that like top area that is, has a, a certain color to it, and then the thieves are just going to be straight up uh, cream colored. 
Uh, so there's different types of gear, as y'all are seeing there. Um, and then in the casino, you're going to score three points and then two points for each cream color or thief you have there. So it's a gamble. You know, uh, you could commit a lot of people there to try to score a lot of points, but your opponent might do the same, and whoever ends up winning is going to get those points and the, uh, the extra points for that. So, um, and lastly, the Louvre. Uh, there you're going to get five points and then a stolen good. So there's different types of stolen goods in the game. And these are going to score at the end of the game. You're going to see what are all the different goods you stole across the, your districts. Uh, there's a painting here, and then there's also a diamond, and then there's also an antique. You want to try to get different ones. Getting all the same painting is not going to be so hot. Uh, you want to try to score... Uh, unique ones. So like let's say you only get one, you get one point. If you get a painting and a diamond, then that set's worth three points. If you get all three, painting, diamond, and antique, that's worth seven points. So that's where the good stuff is. So if you got two paintings, then each one would be worth one point. So for a total of two points, that would be how, you know, if you got a lot of the same. You don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so um, these locations are going to be where you're playing your thief cards. And each round, you're either going to be playing thieves or you're going to be playing gear. Gear can only be played onto a thief. So you want to think about, hey, where do you want to commit your thieves to uh, as you'll be playing them out in one of those three places. And then the next round, you're going to be giving those thieves gear. And then you're going to play a little bit more thieves, but it gets less and less each round. Uh, and then you're going to give them gear and then do that one more time. And then the game's going to end and we'll tally up all the points. So hopefully that's a quick overview of things. Um, and there's, I guess, just uh, uh, alert here. There's iconography out the wazoo in the game. Uh, at first, it might seem like a bit much, but I think that you'll pick it up in no time as you kind of figure out how it all works and the different things. So um, the way you win a location is having the most capers there. Uh, you're going to put those three lo lo locations between y'all two so that you can kind of place them out on the board between y'all three so you can have your side or your location area and then your opponent's location area will be on the other side. Right, exactly. So, um, the first round you're going to be playing your thieves. So, you're going to deal each player four cards. So, uh, that's from the round tracker. It's saying, hey, deal four cards from the cream colored deck and that's going to be a thief round. So, y'all will each, yep, there you go. You got it. Uh, each start with four cards. And now here's where the fun begins. So the heart of the game is drafting. You're, the cream color player goes first on the rounds that match their color, and then the mint player goes first on rounds that match their color. So you are going to play a thief into one of those locations, then the mint player would do so, and then y'all are gonna switch hands. So this is called a drafting game. So that means that you, uh, you need to think about, hey, what do you need to do, but also what combos are your opponents going for that you need to maybe take away from them or, or, or not allow them to have because you're going to be giving them their thieves. You know, it's like, hey, you hired these guys, great, and now that you didn't hire these other guys, they're going to the other guy to see the other thief mastermind to see if they'll hire him um, or whatnot. So, uh, and you're up first. There's a bit of iconography, and I can help uh, kind of talk through that to give you an idea of what it all means. I um, think that's a good uh, oh so she's there's digging also, through the quick reference guide in the uh, the manual right now this isn't now. showing up so well because of the lighting but there is a really nice here <coughs> put this under the screen real quick there's a really nice little book that uh, this i guess has got all of the iconography and some quick little explanations for each one and that's really helpful because right now i'm looking at my thieves trying to figure out what exactly the iconography means um would you give that back to me sure okay Matthew. That's me. Close your eyes. Sure. Okay. All right, Maddox. So this is, w I mean, he's going to see these all eventually. So yeah. talk to me about that iconography. Let's talk about it. That's great. That's going to be really helpful. So I the gonna mime look. is, is going to give you one caper. So, and you're going to see these cards in just a second too because y'all are going to be switching hands. So no big deal if he does end up seeing it. But the mime. So that guy down there, that little thief dude with a cape on it, he's going to get a caper. Uh, one caper is what he's giving you. And then he's also going to give you one victory point for each of your opponent's cream color or thief cards at that area. So you're saying, like, if you play him in an area, uh, you're saying, hey, you know, opponent, you probably don't want to come into this area because, like, the more you play guys here, the more points I'm going to get. Uh, 
that how do you know if it's your opponents or your uh, your area so there's that little map marker icon if it's pointed down towards you that means it's your whole location area not just on the mine but on the whole area but if it's pointed towards your opponent like the the mimes is here that means your opponent's area okay so, and that's on that little quick reference on this one the tiny quick reference card in yep. the pink those so locations that's just how you know if yep. it's your opponents or your cards and th those are for that whole entire location not just uh, played onto a thief okay so I've I'm gonna toss it up and I have a question for you now Maddox I'm not familiar with this symbol on the saint here <laughs> yeah great. so the saint some cards allow you to flip over cards uh, the saint is going to protect your green gear it's gonna lock them down and not allow them to be flipped over so they're protected in that location so you know you're safe to play cards here uh, green cards here, they're not going to get knocked out by uh, the red card is the one that will knock it out. The Blaze Blaster 451 is what that piece of gear is called. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, y'all, Anne will play first, uh, and, and you're choosing one location. A location can have a max of three thieves on your side, um, and then uh, Matt will play a card, and then y'all will switch hands. Okay, so... I have my so are, so we're not doing the deck thing we're, now. We take one card, we yeah. put it down, then we trade hands, then oh, we draft oh. from the remaining. So cards. and I can choose any of these locations. Yes. Yeah, so where yes. you're picking one thief from your hand to put at one of those locations. Okay. So the locations can kind of help you know. Uh, hey, you know, one of the locations wants blue cards. The gala will be a good combo to have blue cards there because you're going to score extra points there. Uh, that's that. If you have something in your hand that maybe combos with that well, that could be good to play there. Um, if you're trying to go for a lot of art, uh, the Louvre, winning the Louvre might be important, or a lot of stolen goods, because the Louvre gives you one of those. And the casino, you're going to score more points for your thieves there, so the mine might be fun to play there because it's going to say, hey, even if I don't win this, I'm going to get I'm going to get points from you uh, because you're like scoring points for your opponent. And the way you win a location okay. is having the most capers there. Okay, so I think I think I'm gonna take your advice and I think I'm gonna place the mime at the casino. Now one side is my side and one side is your side. Yes. So Correct. do I place him on my side? Yes. And I place him like such? Sure that works. Uh like technically the for the sake of the video it's like easier to see it this way maybe, but yeah, you would place them like that and the locations would be like vertically yeah. aligned in the middle, like they would be turned uh so ah. the so. long ways. Yeah. For the sake of ease of people watching at home, we'll probably put it this direction here. Okay. Because cool. okay. in the real world, we'd be sitting across the table. Yeah. Because so if not, I could do this. Exactly. And the, the mime doesn't give you any income. So some thieves have a, 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 a number of coins on the bottom that you will collect. Uh, like the bon vivant. It gives you three coins there. Uh, th those guys are going to allow you to pay for some nice gear. Uh some of the gear cards can give you coins too, but uh, some thieves are some good ways to get that money to pay for the nice gear. Speaking of the Bon Vivant, that's who I'm going to play over at how the gala. Did, how did you convince Maddox to put you in the game? <laughs> that's really... <laughs> that's actually what I'd like to know. I mean... <laughs> and when I'm, did you dye your hair? I'm flattered if you think I'm that thin. So now we're going to trade hands. Okay. So and you take three coins for that because you played uh, your thief. Uh, he's going to give you three. Um, oh, yeah. And then... Anytime you're like taking coins, that's going to happen immediately. But uh, all the other stuff gets tallied up at the end of the game, um, point wise. So, like, the Bon Vivant is giving you one point for every green card at the gala. And you don't have to win the location for your thieves to get their uh, ability, right? Your thieves will always work for you, um, but it, you only get the locations uh, award if you win it. Okay, so I've got a question for you here, Maddox. Uh, what is the question mark at the bottom of the smuggler? Yeah, great question. So again, those uh, stolen good sets. This can be a wild. It can be anyone you want. So let's say you got a painting and an antique and you were lacking that third one, the diamond. That could be that. You can make it whatever you want at the end of the game. Cool. So Anne still places first. Oh, I do? Because you're the cream color. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that I'm going to go... Oh, you're going to put your self-portrait down. For the coins. I am. I'm going to put my self-portrait down. And I think I'm going to place the saint at the loo because 
This is cream color cards. This is blue color cards. She's looking for green color cards. Will probably, right? Yeah. I mean, whatever so, yeah, logic you call want. I mean, you're, you're. So the Saints gonna help you get green cards. Those green cards are focused on stolen goods. So she's great to play there. And then you can take your three coins from that. Look, we're just gonna pretend like I did that super intentionally <laughs> just for that reason. Oh, these are nice. So I'm cards. gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play the smuggler down at the Louvre. <laughs> do you see what it says on the card? On, on the, the coin. coin? One scoundrel. <laughs> That's too cute. So, Anne, give me my cards back. And, uh, Matt, you'll take your one coin for the smuggler's income. Aw, oh, yeah. Okay. I think... So, this is our last so, round of placing here, right, Maddox? That's correct. You, every time you have two cards, you'll play one and always discard your last card. And so, and for... Oh, go ahead, oh, Maddox. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it's it's not important for Paris, but for other parts of the game, it's important to keep your discard separate uh, because, like, in Rome, the driver can pull a card out of your discard pile back into the game. He Ooh. basically drives some gear out at the last second um, and whatnot. I'm going to place the gentleman at the gala. Oh, oh. yeah. He's going to be there with the bon vivant. With the drunk gentleman that I have there. <laughs> So, he's awesome. He's going to give you three points if you get a blue, a green, and a yellow card in that area. I have to work hard. Hmm. And you're going to get your income for him, too. Okay. So, now I have four coins. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the... Oh, man. I'm going to play the banker over at the... The, the gala also. So you yeah. don't have anybody at the casino? And that's going to give two coins. So this this keeps going back and forth. It doesn't end right here. So I don't want to give you any... Po I'm, I'm trying not to give you points for your mime. Because you're going to get points here if I put stuff down. So these go on the discard pile over okay. there. Then uh, you can move the turn tracker over. And what's the card number next to that? Wait, I'm moving it over no, or down? Uh, down one. To the six, so and then it's got a little luggage. Six. Ooh, for gear. Four, That's right. five, six. Okay, so we're going to get six like cards it. each, and now I'm going to go first, and we're going to take turns going back and forth, placing goodies. So, uh, Maddox, you're saying that some of these things cost money, and some of these things give you money, right? So, yes, anything in the top left is going to be cost. Some of your gear is free. Uh, that one, for example, costs two. Uh, now, any yellow gear uh, is going to give you money. So those scoundrels uh, or those coins there, you're going to take two coins for that. Um, so just as like a, a helpful hint, uh, yellow gear gives money, green gear gives you the stolen goods, and blue gear gives you capers. Gotcha. So I am still I back go first, Ann. Looking. Calm, calm it down. Shh. Big bag of shh. And you, so you can only play these gear cards onto a thief. So and each thief has a max of three, correct? That's correct. And if they're maxed out, then they get an extra caper for free. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the Mark 15 grappling gun over on the Bon Vivant. Yeah. So... It's tricky here playing this way, but basically you'll want the card to cover up uh, that bottom part of the Bon Vivant where the coins are, so that you can still see the Bon Vivant's ability, uh, but you uh, are going to be covering up the other stuff, so it's going to be a little tricky of the with the, the smuggler there. So I think um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it like that and see if that works out for us. Cool. Um, and yeah, so that's great. So you're stealing an antique... Uh, and we'll see what happens. Is this select and pass also? Yes, it is. And we do this uh, five times now, Maddox? Yes, so you'll you'll do five. Um, anytime you have two cards left, you'll play one and then discard that last one. So in this round, you'll be playing five cards. Gotcha. All right, so and what goodies are you going to give your folks? Um... I like that I gave the drunk guy the grappling hook. Yeah, it's going to work out real well for you. <laughs> it does. He's giving him some extra points, right? One point for every green card. He's, like, scoring double on that. It's a good good combo. There's definitely a difference between blue and teal cards. I'm going to... 
to... <laughs> I think I am going to give my saint a Mark 15 grappling gun. Oh, you gave the old nun a grappling hook. <laughs> Heck yeah. She because... It's protected. Because though, so awesome. because it's a green card and I'm playing it with the saint with her ability, my green cards are locked. Right, so your green cards will not be able to be flipped. There's only three cards in the game. That, there's three red cards in the game that allow you to flip over a card. So your your green card there is safe. It can't be flipped because the saint protects them. Uh, okay. If you want, you can just like put that card below the saint where that like three is, so you can kind of like, uh, and you'll be able to like stack that gear on top so that you only see the top part of the of each card. Now, um, so here the icon here is for a the art icon for painting. And then you stole an antique, or you will steal an antique uh, with that saint's ability there, or with the saint's grappling gun. Um, and so you're hoping to get a diamond, because that would be a great way to complete that set. But you got to win the Louvre to get that. That painting. Uh, painting. Okay. Hmm. This little reference guide is really handy, because there's a lot going on. Yeah, there is. But I that the, this reference guide is super duper handy. Um, so. I'm going to then, hmm, you know, I'm going to give the skeleton key here to my banker. So that's going to give me two coins for playing that. Yep, and then, so you take it immediately, and then he's going to be able, he's also going to give you a point for that at the end of the game. The more yellow cards you get in that area, the, the more you'll score. So one of the things there, too, even if that yellow card was played onto the Bon Vivant, uh, it would still give you a point at the end of the game because it's counting for that whole location area, that banker's ability. Oh, okay. So you might want to think about, uh, with that, the red cards, when they flip a card, you can only flip a, the top most card on a character. So the way that the cards lay, are laid are more like the saint down there. Um, that one's protected, but let's say there was a red card played in that area, you can flip an opponent's card over. So by... You know, playing your yellow card onto the Bon Vivant, it would lock down the green card beneath him, if that makes sense. It, it, it would be, it's not the topmost card. Uh, it wouldn't be able to be flipped over because there's a card played over it. Okay. And you would be closer to maxing out that thief uh, that would give you a bonus caper. Gotcha. Okay, so Anne, what goodies are you playing now? I think... I think I'm gonna play false documents on my gentleman. So let's let's show off your false documents, and so this is gonna give you a caper for each yellow card that you have at your location. Great play, because you want blue and yellow there for that gentleman's ability. So a caper for each yellow card. You want to throw some yellow cards in there. Those will give you some coins, but also capers now. Okay. okay, did you have to pay to use that? You had to pay a coin. I did. Okay, cool. I'm down so now to we're going to pass them across. One scoundrel. You are a scoundrel. Yeah. You can always discard a card uh, to gain a coin instead of playing one. Oh. Uh, if you can't pay for something or you just don't want your opponent to have that thing, that's a, a thing you can do. <laughs> that's helpful. So question, Maddox, are there a finite number of scoundrel coins in the game? So there's only ten, and it's intentionally that way. Uh, where if you ever needed to gain coins uh, and there wasn't any in the, the bank, you would take from your opponent while you had less than them. So that means if oh. uh, Anne had six and you had four and you were supposed to gain coins, you would gain one at a time, so you would both get five. Uh, yeah, or you would take one and you all would both end up having five. Oh, so it doesn't, it doesn't do well for you to hoard all the coins. No, and London, Matthew. the city, is actually like really focused on this idea of wearing your opponent's economy down. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the Plasma Cutter on the Bon Vivant as well. So that doesn't cost me. I actually get a coin from that. So I'm going to take a coin, and I'm going to get a point from that one. And yep. I'm ready to pass over to you, Ann. I'm going to put my gentleman in an incognito tuxedo. Ooh, you oh, yeah, fancy. he wants that so bad. So spiffy. So this is kind of... A caper for green cards. So now I've got a caper for green cards and a caper for yellow cards. And, did you, and you had to pay one for that. Yeah, okay. So now yeah. you're broke. So now I'm broke. 
I'm Brizoke as a Jazoke. That's so lame. <laughs> so lame. I'll be here all night, folks. <laughs> so then I am now going to... You know what? I'm going to smoke screen... That's rude. ...on the smuggler. So I'm, I'm smoke screening your nun there, and that's what you get there. So that's going to be a, a caper and a victory point for that, and I have to pay one to use it. I'm super excited to watch my nun come out of the cloud of smoke on her grappling hook. <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited for this video. You just can't hide it. I just can't hide it. Do 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 do. I think I like it. Um. 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 I think I'm gonna play skeleton key on the mime. So what are you playing? What am I yellow? Wait. Oh no. I'm playing it on the gentleman. So the gentleman's Heck maxed yeah. out now. Yes, I think this I like. So that was the skeleton key. So that one gave you two uh, yeah. scoundrels. Coins? Scoundrels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can call them either, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. So he's got, he has one caper from being maxed out, and then he's giving you another caper for uh, that one for every yellow card in that location. So two total there. Okay. I'll and win. Matt has zero. So currently you're winning. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right. So trying to see what I want to do here. So you know what? Because you said that, I'm going to I'm gonna put a simple disguise <laughs> on my bon vivant. Is I he going to wear glasses on his glasses? He's going to wear glasses on his glasses and a mustache over his mustache. Or They'll his not never mustache. recognize him. He can just sneak wherever. <laughs> Yo, dog. And then this one gets discarded. Okay. Yes, your last one gets discarded here. Uh, and now he's getting a caper for being fully equipped and has that extra caper from the blue card. Raise okay, the roof. I am going to. It's gonna be so good. You ready? No. I'm gonna put secret shades <laughs> on your. <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez, the op the optic secret shades. So this is gonna give you a caper for each blue card that I have. Yeah, that you play in that for location. Each, uh, teal card. Yeah. Uh, so this is specific to Paris. That bottom icon there just means when you're setting up the game, that's coming from Paris or whatnot. But Yes, a caper, just straight up, uh, it'll give her. And then you, you, in order to put two cards into that location, have to pay an extra coin. Oh, Cost the... Cost one extra for you in that area. The blue cards. She's so fashionable. She's Teal. driving up the prices with her secret shades. Um, yeah. So Fancy. any teal card that you want to play in that area, Matt, is going to cost one extra coin. Okay. It's making it expensive. Thanks, nun, for giving me the stink eye. <laughs> All right, and you're going to discard your last yes. card here. So then the turn tracker is going to progress one more time. So it says three, and it's thieves. And how many? What's the number there? Three. Three. And it's thieves. <laughs> I didn't hear. I didn't hear you the first time. So what number is it? <laughs> All right. So got our three thieves. Less thieves. You're only going to be playing two of these guys um, and gals. So who? I go first this first. round. Okay. So you gotta commit. You're like, oh man, where should I commit more to? Uh, you're pretty evenly spread, which is great. Your mime over there is maybe lonely, with no gear, feeling like a little naked, maybe. <laughs> naked the mime. naked mime. <laughs> That's not disturbing. <laughs> oh my god. He's pulling the rope. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. Okay. Look. <laughs> I agree that my mime's a little naked. However, I really cannot pass up the opportunity. No, I kind of love this. I'm going to be playing the madam. The madam. And, <laughs> and she's going to go chill with the saint. Because oh, that's yeah. the fancy area. So, these abilities here. So does that mean... Okay, so she gets plus one point for every teal card that I play. Uh-huh. Correct. And then she all... It also costs one more for me to play all the other Color. colors as well. <laughs> yeah, she's making it terrible for you at the Louvre. <laughs> it's exclusive. That's where you go to see the art. Only the fancy people can go. I don't like you, man. <laughs> I love you, Matthew. I don't like you. <laughs> I'm going to play the colonel at the gala. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, <laughs> great combo. You're getting a point if you win the gala for every blue card, and then Colonel's going to give you another point for every blue card. 
Uh, and then you'll gain your income. What does he give you? Two, I believe, coins? Uh, yes, he does. Give me those coins. So you know now, Ann, that uh, Matt can no longer play any more thieves at the gala. He's kind of maxed out on thieves, although gear might change. Okay. He's got his three thieves over there. Um. All right. Hmm. So for the casino, when this is talking about cream cards, the cream cards are only th thieves, right? Because I haven't seen any... Correct. Okay, so this all is just... All thieves are cream cards, and then all the other multicolored cards are gear. Okay, that's so this is... I win this location if I have the most people here. You win that location capers. if you have the most capers there. Any capers. location is won by the most capers. That's right. But you, you will get extra points if you have people there. So for every thief there, you score two extra points. It was a smart move playing the mime there. Gotcha. I don't it even was know a if you realized. But it was a fantastic <laughs> move. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> no, you don't want to go to the casino with the mime. Why? It'd be so much fun to play blackjack with. It's a naked mime. That's oh, man, disturbing. his poker face just, you know, scares you away. So, um, give Oh, me yeah, I need to play something now, don't I? <gasps> Wait, uh, no, you just played the colonel. It's my turn. How many cards do you have? Two. And you place the madam... That's oh no! I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first card you placed. I got, I got my my orders back mixed up. Yes. So you're <laughs> put, it in the put it in the green screen. You're playing the Ooh, illusionist. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. So this what do you flip what? over a card at this location in your opponent's area? So that you know that top map marker says flip over a card. You can only flip over a card. Uh, that has no gear on it, right? So you can only flip over the topmost card. Uh, so the colonel is the only one that could be flipped here. Those gear cards would technically be played onto those thieves below them or whatnot. Um, so colonel's flipped. His uh, combo, his double wombo combo of blue is shut down. Also, I get a coin. So There's no coins. Does that mean no. I, that I can place a new thief there? Nope. You can still play gear onto him, but he is just knocked out. His ability is knocked out. Okay. And now that uh, so he's got a coin on him, but Matt's decided to hoard all of the bank. So you get the Doesn't coin from me instead. You get a coin, yep. If oh. you have less than him, as long okay. as you have less than me. Okay. So. Yeah. Harumph. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to play the conductor over at the casino. Oh yeah, singing a song over there. So the so conductor that, is giving you a caper for every blue and green pair at that location. So, And uh, I would get a coin, but uh, you have less than me, and there's no more in the bank, so I don't get a coin. Okay. Yeah. Do we discard these yeah, last cards? We do cards? discard the last ones. Okay. So, so then now the next round is six gear cards. Six. I'm going to mime it for you. <laughs> You're a great <laughs> mime. Good. I hope that hurt. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go first because I am awesome. Salty. I am salty as well. Ooh, what's that? Okay. So question for you here, Maddox. The eavesdropper. Yes. What is that symbol that I'm looking at there? That's a great place where you, you think there's a lot of thieves. So you're going to score a caper for every cream card in your opponent's area. So the things pointing to your opponent's cream color cards get a caper for them. So you play that at the Louvre or the Gala, you're going to get two capers. Um, and, and then if she plays another thief there, you're getting another caper for that. For okay. Me. So I like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the all ears eavesdropper over on the banker. He's, he's sitting there with the big thing stuck in his ear. And you're also getting those blue cards, the, those combos away from her that her gentleman wants, which is good. It's kind yeah. of salty, actually. Oh, yeah. You know me. Okay. I think that I am going to pay two coins to not 
do something beneficial for you. I want to pay two coins to play Helping Hand on the Illusionist. So the Illusionist is getting the Helping Hand then. Okay. Heck yeah. Right, because that still fulfills my gentleman set because I'll have yellow, blue, and green. Correct. You, yeah, you could even try to get another another set going there of that. It doesn't. You can do it twice. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, also, that's going to give you a diamond, a stolen diamond. So you have a, ju a diamond and an antique currently. Uh, if you win that in the Louvre, you'll get a painting to make that sweet set go on, go happen. That'll be so good. Okay, so then I am going to. gonna play the aqua respirator over on the smuggler and mm. i know it's gonna cost me an extra coin two to play it coins there. two extra and coins I, one extra. yeah so the madam is making all gear one more expensive and then her uh secret shades makes it <laughs> the teal cards even more expensive not gonna put that there <laughs> not gonna <laughs> why not that's too if expensive. If you'd also score a point from that uh, teal cards in that area, her madam does. You can still get that. Like so, your stolen goods are scored across your whole game, right? Like if you played that onto the conductor up there, uh, it's not working with this combo, but you would still get any type of stolen good that you'd want, and it only costs two, not the more expensive. Gotcha. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my conductor in a simple disguise. You know, th that simple disguise looks an awful lot like the Bon, Viv bon Vivant simple disguise, and now I think it's a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my thieves <laughs> uniform. Uh, I am going to play the skeleton key on the mime. So that's going to give you two coins. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to take two coins. Okay. Cinco, cinco very much. Decifer you and decipher me. Okay, so... I am then going to play the false bottom briefcase on my conductor, which is what? Nothing. You're making a face. I don't know if I like it. So I'm going to put that there. It's going to cost me three gold, and uh, that symbol there means that no green cards can be flipped over in this location. Protected. Locked down. Okay. Your turn, Ann. Is that your set now because you have a blue and a green? Uh, correct. Now you have the key. Yes, you get another blue and a green in there and get some more sets going of that. Okay. I am going to... What are you going to do? I'm going to do so much. So much. I have faith in you, Anne. Not really. That's so rude. So rude. Just want to make sure that I understand what I'm doing. Nope, that's imponent. You know what you're doing. Ha ha. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Um, I'm going to play the super magnet. Super magnet. What's that? Yeah, I'm gonna play a super magnet on magnet on the illusionist. So super magnet. What's so yellow? Is gonna be <laughs> gives you a coin and then it gives you a coin for every thief in your in the that the opponent has in that location. So you're gonna have four coins then. Well, if I play it in the gala, then you have three thieves, but one's flipped. Still so counts as a thief card. Okay, so then I'm gonna get four coins. Jeez, Anne. That's not a lot nice. of money. Because it's, yeah. it's not just a regular magnet, Matt. It's a super magnet made by Magneto. Not to be confused with Magneto. Obviously. One, two, three, four. Give my cards. Call me Scrooge McDuck. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the skeleton key on my banker. So love I'm those yellow cards. So I'm going to need two coins. So there's one in the bank, yes. and then thanks, Anne. I'm going to so, take one from you. So salty. Nice. So uh, banker's fully equipped. He gets an extra caper for that. For me. He's just got a bunch of keys. I'm think. pretty sure he's a janitor more than a banker. <laughs> yeah, he just got a <laughs> ring of keys on him. <laughs> yeah, it's for the safety deposit boxes. There. there you go. Two ones for you. 
Okay, hold on a second. I'm double checking. So, and something. if you get like one more green in that in the gala, that'll give you the gentleman's combo twice. That's that's what I'm hoping. Don't tell her that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Oh no, that's just because expensive. I'm like out of the cards that I really want, man. Okay. Um. I. I'm going to play the plans cash on the madam. So what what does that do? Oh, that's a piece. That of is one point for each teal each of my teal gear cards at that location. Okay, so then we will play and pass. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with this. And then do y'all have two cards left. Scoot. Scoot, it's, no, scoot the card you just played down so you can see. There you go. Uh, so I'm going to play the Super Magnet over here on the Upside Down General. So I'm going to get a gold from that. And, uh, oh no, that's probably not a good move to play that there now. Eh, it's too late. I played it. So I have five. I would get a whole bunch of other coins. Oh, I would get two more coins, but we're tied at five right now. So it's going to stay at five coins apiece. Okay. Now it's your turn. I'm gonna and then this is going to get discarded. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play the Aqua Respirator. Obviously, I'm going to play that card on the Madam. Madam. Yeah, the she's Madame. just doubling. Oh, man. Well, you got to watch her out for her over there. Oh, she's going to beat she's the crap up. out of me. <laughs> those teal cards over there. Are those... Cream and, discard. Oh, those are the discards? Green discard. Josh There's didn't give us some enough pile cards of to stuff. set up here. Thanks, Josh! So we're going to move the round tracker down. Yes, and now it's at two thief cards. I don't know what this is. Because oh, yeah. Give me give me these two. So um, Josh is colorblind. Can board cam out a little? Sure. I think we're getting a little... Uh, so those are your two cards. A little comfy. You get to play first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> these are and so you're only, good. You're, you're only playing one, and then the second one's discarded. That's, That's true. It. That's wow. true. Make, okay. Make make your choice wise. No pressure. No pressure at all. Tons of pressure. Yeah. Thanks. Lots of pressure. All Under the pressure. Under pressure. Do 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 do. Pressure. What? What? So you're thinking maybe at the Louvre, the smuggler has a caper. And you have a caper and from your saint. So you're all putting neck and neck there. You still have two more slots there to play. Uh, same with Matt. Um, has two more slots there. Matt's gala is almost, he's only got two slots there. Uh, uh, caper wise, I think he's got you there currently, but you might, if you wanted to commit another person there, you could. Or uh, over at the, the casino, he's got uh, two capers, I believe. Um, so watch out. I think I think he's trying to get that too. Don't. Okay. I haven't seen any red gear cards come out. That means they're probably all going to come out at the end here. There's only a few of them in the deck. Uh, so you're probably mentioning the cleaner. The cleaner wants things to get, get destroyed uh, immensely. Uh, so you're going to score more points for red gear in your opponent's area. So if they are playing that there, you know, you're like, hey, don't play red gear in this area. I'm going to be making points off you. And then it's also a discount for you to play red gear there. So if you know you want to be flipping some cards, you know, in the top part, you're, you're not going to be able to flip any cards because the conductor's got his thing going on. Uh, I mean, he's got a, a green gear that protects uh, green gear there. But if, if you know you might want to be flipping cards somewhere, you'd be a good guy to play somewhere. You need Why to don't we make show it sure off that camera. at any you know event that you're at that the windows are nice and clean. The, the cleaner. There we go. So you're playing that over at the, the gala? <laughs> Just because I really don't want you to have it. Uh, I'm going to play the chef <laughs> over down here in the Louvre. Le Louvre. What does he do? So the chef's going to give me a caper for each blue card and one of any color card combined with it. So, uh, just as a heads up, Matt, the, the teal card there, it's the teal in any card, and everything is super expensive there for you, <laughs> especially, yep. well, especially teal cards, too. Yep, I know. Wah, wah. One, um, two. So we are at 
six gear. We are at the final countdown. Do -do -do -do. All right, so I am up first. Ah, here it is. Hmm. Mm. Oh boy, this is. So, what does your red guy give you? A million dollars in twenty dollar bills and brown paper bags. There are two sets of green cards in front of me. Yep, you should have organized better. Red card that you play is going to score three point five at that location. And Why? then she gets a discount on red cards. Why did you give me two sets of gear cards? I didn't. How many cards are you supposed to have? Six. Okay, which pile is six? Uh, what is this? Was that with that? Oh. Communication is key. I'll fight you. Okay. So. <laughs> <sighs> this is troublesome. <laughs> Whose turn is it? It's my turn to I go first. Play. Oh, Jesus. So, <laughs> I, yeah, thanks, Ann. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pay two gold to pay, play this Pyromaniac Blaze Blaster Blaze 451. Blaster. I'm going to play that on the chef down here, and then I'm going to flip so, over your sunglasses. Yeah, that's a good call to flip that. Unfortunately, that costs one extra because the madam makes things expensive. That's fine. So your sunglasses, oh. you can flip those over. All right. The okay. super optic secret shades. Yep, sorry. Shut down those combos. That's right. It's cool. All right. Um. Okay, don't flip this over until you put it in the green screen, because I want to really enjoy this moment. Uh, this is a diamond, and it's going to be the blaze shield suit. So this is you get two victory points every red card that I play in an area. It's fine. It cost me two less, and I'm putting it on the cleaner. Wait, no, what? Okay. Look at how else. And that means now I have my next two sets, set uh, for my gentleman. Gotcha. So pass him. Oh, yeah. You can have that now. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, and that only costs two for you. Correct. So if there is no cost associated on a card, if it goes into the madam's area, does it still have a cost of one then? It really should. It still has a cost of one, yep. Okay, so I'm going to play my top secret plans there on my chef because I can Heck think of yeah. no better person. And you want to get those cards away from her. She wants those so bad. Yeah. Yes, it's the, it's the, KF, <laughs> it's the KFC secret spice recipe. It's the 11 secret herbs and spices I gave to the chef um... that no one will know from now on. So, Anne, what are you playing? I am playing this game where I read the book to figure out what it is that it does. Um, that was the top one you played there. Those I don't care so much about. Wait, what was the card you just played? Uh, I played the Secret Plans on the Chef. That doesn't excite me as much. Okay. I'm going to play... Can I flip my cards back over? Nope. No cards can get flipped. Blah. Back over. Okay. Um, I'm going to play the skeleton key Yarr. on my Cleaner. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Oh. And I'm going to get two key coins. Okay. Oh, okay. Now I want to do. Yep, yeah, I'm happy. As a happy girl. Okay, so then I will play. Oh, I can't afford that. I can't afford anything right now. Oh, you can no. always discard a card to get coins. How many coins do I get for discarding a card? A single coin. Ooh. Okay. Well, I will discard one of these bad boys to get a coin. Okay. He discarded one of the Blaze Blaster 451s. I am going to pay two coins to play the Secomatic Suction Scalers. Okay. And who are you playing that on? That. Okay. Three is going to go on to the illusionist 
Yes, I think that I'm happy with that. Should okay. I play this on the Illusionist or should I play it on the Saint? I should play it. No, no, I am happy. Too late. You took your hands off. Triple combo that gentleman over there. You gotta watch out for him. You're the worst. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pay my two coins and I'm going to put the helping hand over on the upside down general over here. Okay. And then I'm going to pass that back. I am going to pay my one coin to play my blaze blaster. No. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Harumph. Oh, that's fine. My wow. my minus one is to anything, right? To, to I can put it anywhere. In that location, it has to be in that location. The red has to be in this location. Yeah. So that location map marker, it means you get a discount for playing any red card into this location. Bleh. Um, all right, I'm going to discard it and get a coin. Okay. And then I'm going to, you go. Uh, I can't play anything, so I would, I would discard to get a coin, but that's the last Here's card, your coin. so. I'm going to pay my one coin, and I'm going to play smoke screen on Triple the Triple combo. Oh my oh. gosh. She did it. I done did it. She got all the points in the world. Oh my gosh. All right. So that is uh, the end of the game. Now we're going to tally up who won each location, and then you're going to use your nifty score pad to tally up points. So That's this. let's look at the Louvre first. We're, right now we're just counting capers, and we're going to uh, basically point the Louvre to whoever won it and move it towards that player's uh, set of guys. So right. um, at the Louvre, Matt has one caper from his chef, his combo of a teal card and any colored card. And then he has another caper from his smuggler. And sadly, he has no capers there. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba Sad days. So you won the Louvre, Matt. You can just like turn the Louvre towards you. Um, you or basically your guys, um, the chef and the smuggler over there, and then move it towards you. Uh, we're, we're not, we won't be tallying points until we... Yeah, you can just put him that way, just to mark that he won it. All right, this is going to be a fun place to count. So, Anne... You have, uh, I'm trying to look in here, a caper from your gentleman. We, oh, yeah, we're going to start with a cleaner. So the cleaner gives you one caper from his item and then one caper for being fully equipped. Uh, the, the illusionist is giving you uh, a caper for being fully equipped. Oh, yeah. And then uh, the gentleman is giving you a caper for being fully equipped. So that's four right now. And then uh, a caper for each yellow card, so five, six, seven. And then a caper for each. What is the color is that? I can't see. A uh, green, green card. Uh, so eight, nine, ten. Ten capers. It's gonna be hard to beat. Uh, over here, Matt is getting a caper from the Bon Vivant, uh, his item, and then a, another one for being fully equipped. Uh, the banker is getting one for being fully equipped, and then uh, another three for that uh, card that says one for each thief. So that's six total right now. And then I can't, my, uh... There's nothing on that last one. Okay, so six total, and got the gala. So six is less than ten, so and you get the gala. Yep. And then lastly, the casino. The mime has a caper. The, uh... What's his name? The conductor up there has two capers. One from his uh, combo, and then one from the item. So, Matt wins it. All right. Well played. Now we're going to tally up points and see who where. Uh, each person kind of kicked in their their points. So uh, Matt scored five points from the Louvre, and then uh, another five points from the casino. Okay. So you'll put ten points for him on uh, his nifty score sheet. Uh, it's uh, uh, three points for the casino, no? It's three points, and then two points for each of your thieves there. So you had one thief there. Oh. Okay. So you score uh, five for that. The Louvre's going to give you a, a, a painting which will tally up at the uh, with the stolen goods. Okay. Here, you could you, you have better handwriting than me. I sure do. So, oh, go ahead, put it in, put it in the from his locations. <laughs> so, locations I have 10 points in. Okay. And then Anne is getting uh, 
what is the, is the gala four or five points? Five. Five, and then one for every blue, so eight total. Okay. That was a nice one, Ann. It was. Now for your thieves. So uh, Matt's thieves are going to kick in, so uh, Smuggler and Chef aren't getting him any points. His bon vivant is going to give him one, two points uh, from the, the guy over there, too, correct? That green card over. Oh, okay. Green here. Yeah, green it's, here. it's for every green card. So, yeah, it's going to get two points for the bon vivant. And, and then the banger's going to give him uh, three, four, five, six. Um, so he's currently at six. And then uh, the conductor's just capers. So Matt scores six points for his thieves. Okay. And scored all the points here. All the points here. So the madam's going to give her one point for your, uh, the chef has that teal card there. So that's one point for each opponent card. Yep. And then uh, the gentleman's going to give you nine points. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So that's uh, ten currently. Uh, and that's the for cleaner. these combos right here. Correct. Yep. Uh, the blue, yellow, green combos. So you're currently at 10 points. The cleaner doesn't give you anything because uh, Matt didn't play any red cards there. And then the mime is going to give you another point, so 11 points total. Okay. okay. So now your gear. Uh, Matt over here is getting one point, two points uh, in that bottom location, one from the blue card and then one from the teal card, card counts itself. Uh, so I'm sorry, three total. Uh, one from the red, one from the blue, and then one the two card um, would count itself. His uh, a location above that is going to give him a point for the yellow card there, and then uh, that is currently that's currently it for Matt. So four points total. Yep. Okay. Then and uh, victory point cards. Uh, the teal card down there is going to give her two points. Uh, and then none up at the location above it and none at the location above. Oh, sorry, one there, yep. And this is for just that one? That's okay, just one, three. so that's three Just a straight up point, yeah. Okay. So you have three total. And now... And now last, your stolen goods, your sets of them. So right. Matt got, Smuggler can be anything that you want it to be, and you stole a, what is that, a diamond and a... I have a diamond here. I've got an is that an antique yep. there, and, an and then an art up here. So so seven points plus another one is eight total. And then he's so also got the art from, from the, the Louvre. Louvre. Oh, nice. So that'll be another three. So ten. So seven. You formed your full set of seven, uh, worth seven points, and then you started another set and were able to get two unique ones because the the smuggler can be anything you want it to be. Okay, and then and how are you on stolen goodies? Um, I have an antique, a jewel, and an art, and an art. So that's seven. And an additional yep. jewel. So that's eight. Yep. Okay. So what was the final tally? Um, hold on. I only. And did you count 22. your uh, your aqua respirator that got you anything you wanted it to get you? No, I didn't. <laughs> so that would be ten also. So you got ten also for that, yeah. Yeah. Woo. Uh, excuse me, I have to go back and, uh, you know, got to go back through the numbers again. She is an accountant, after 19. all. <laughs> you wouldn't think so this late at night. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> so, what's the final score? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you won, didn't you? Oh, Did 32 to 30. Oh, also, the geez. aqua respirator won it for you. Also, it I'd like to point end. out, I just want to clarify... That top row is Matt's handwriting, and I don't want to be crucified for it. There's Whatever. nothing wrong with it. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you put that back again? I just want to look at it. No, it's fine. <laughs> so, good job, Anne. Yay! Congratulations. That was really close. That was really close. That was unexpectedly close. So, Maddox, is there anything else that you want to say tonight about Caper before we jump into Campy Creatures? No, I mean, y'all picked it up super fast. Obviously, there's that little icon hurdle to get over at first, but as after your first game, it just kind of comes quick. And uh, there's a bunch of different ways to play the game, and depending on how the thieves come out and what locations are out are definitely going to change it up a ton. So thank y'all so much for doing it, and congrats, Ann, on the win. Thank you. Don't let it go to your head, kid. <laughs> 
All right, so we're going to do a soft sign-off right now and then come right back for Campy Creatures. So thank you all for joining us this evening. Stay tuned. We're going to be showing off Campy Creatures in just a minute, and then we're going to be doing our first impression of both Caper and Campy Creatures later this evening. But for now, soft signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Anne. We are Twist Gaming, and thanks again, Maddox. Yeah, thank you.